anticipation is palpable. Can you feel it? Uh, we're now going to reveal uh, where in San Diego we are, what roadside attraction, what roadside oddity that here the proprietor and owner, uh, Jordan Michael Geller, says is the happiest place on earth? It really, truly is. Uh, up there with such uh, extravagant attractions as the San Diego Zoo and SeaWorld? Yep, and imagine taking Disneyland and Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory and throwing them in the mix, too. Where are we? Hmm, let's roll that videotape. I feel like I'm, I'm writing my own movie and I'm living the dream and I, I hope it doesn't end. Jordan Michael writer, Geller has saved many souls. His calling? Well, you have to start at the bottom with his sneakers. In fact, you're looking at Jordan's closet, a shoeseum, where his shoe tree is more like an entire forest. This whole area right here is my shrine to the Air Jordan. I've got basketball shoes representing the 70s on my right and the 80s on my left. These are known as the bloody gums. That's supposed to look like gingivitis on the sole right there. His warehouse full of Nikes, a collection of the rarest. To be able to have 11 brand new pairs of shoes that are 26 years old, that really is the shoe that began the whole sneaker craze, it's remarkable. The weirdest. This is one of the other non-Nike shoes. These are inspired by Newport cigarettes. It's called the Ari Menthol. Only 254 pairs exist. And what he calls the most extensive will knock your socks off. There's all the Zoom flights, Hirachis, Court Forces, Solo flights, 360s, I got them all. It all started with all the money he had, $300 and a swap meet. Bargained the guy down to $15 a pair, bought 20 pairs, put them on eBay. He bought Nikes, sold them on eBay, and then used the profits to buy more Nikes. Just built it, grew it, grew it, grew it, and I took all the money and built the most comprehensive shoe collection in the world. He wore a pair at his college graduation. I met my wife in law school. These are the very first shoes that I gave her. He wore a pair at his wedding. All my groomsmen, my dad, and my father-in-law wore these shoes. That's two stories. Place. He has 2,000 more. Believe it or not, my wife and I went to Beaverton, Oregon for our honeymoon, which is where Nike is headquartered. So what event in Jordan's life pushed him to go soul searching? My parents would let me buy two of them a year, you know, for spring and fall of school, and I always wanted two every month. He's making up for everything he missed out on as a youngster. You don't have to walk a mile in his shoes to see that. Nothing like not having what you want as a kid and then having the means to obtain it. And that's basically what I did is I fulfilled my childhood dreams. Some people would see this man with not just shoes, but issues. You may notice actual money on display with these shoes and beads and gems to bring the shoes to life. The shoes are so expensive that I wanted to treat them like treasures. But Jordan wants us to do what he and, did. Know, these Pursue what you're passionate about and enjoy it. Well, to I smile like a child like when you're an adult and then uh, share it with anyone who's interested. Living the dream, baby. You can say Jordan Michael Geller is one of a kind, even though he has two of everything. Ah, uh, yes, and now you're looking at the shoeseum itself. All 9,000 square feet, 2,000 pairs of shoes, not open to the public yet. This is a rare opportunity. What's up for Jordan next? I don't know. Maybe he does open it up. Guys, hmm. we'll send it back to you. His own private Nike museum. I'm, I'm curious, uh, where does the money come from, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> well, the money. Th that's, that's the thing about Here, take a look. Come over here for a second. Yes. Okay. Watch out, Guinness. Watch out for the cord. I just want to show you where the money comes from. Ah. He, he is a successful uh, eBay entrepreneur. Oh, okay. Uh, he went to USD, uh -huh. yeah, uh, presented a, a business plan, and then he started selling Nikes from uh, getting them at swap meets and so forth for hmm. a profit, yeah. and then he uh, went in turn and, and you know, collected uh, these. bought all the Nikes from there. So. My gosh. so is he going to sell these, or are these just his pride and joy, his love, his pillow at night? <laughs> A ginger Let's ask pillow. him. A ginger uh, Vitus pillow. Are you going to sell these? What's your... No, what are you going to do? Not a chance. <laughs> He's not going to sell. I think he wants to really open up a, a museum either here or maybe in Beaverton, Oregon, where Nike is, or Chicago, or, or just right here with SeaWorld. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep know. it here. So, but can anybody go in there, or he, you need a special invite? Can, it, can anybody go in there? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> uh, it's just not open. It's uh, not open yet. Uh, but, uh, but that's why we're here, so we could bring it to you right Very now. Very cool. Very cool. That was a great story. Yeah. Mike, thank you.